I'm in the presence of royalty, Olympic royalty, gold royalty. You've medaled every single year, 69 wins straight. All y'all dripping in gold for real. And to know that you have so many different championship wins and, and all this great excellence that's dripping off of you, how do you pick the best win? The next one. Oh, oh, just the next one, okay. <laughs>、oh, I've always thought about each journey, each quad is really its own unique experience. And there's something really special about whether it's a win or loss about each journey you go through with that specific team. And so I think, for at least for me, how I think of it is there's almost like this storyline or this other meaning to each experience that you go through. So, like, there's a new storyline and experience and people. And I think that's what makes The win so much better is who you get to share it with. I love that you have so many different storylines for each one of them. Do y'all have any experiences where you're like, this is an abnormal situation that's so rewarding? Obviously, we have our team experience, but like each individual person also has a really cool story.、Mm -hmm. And like you have people who move, like Ashley was coming from Florida to train in California for a whole entire year. We have people redshirting from college and missing out on a college experience.、Mm -hmm. like, My first quad, like, I went to online high school. Like, everyone kind of has like, an interesting experience where you're kind of creating your own story individually and you're, making this, you're trying to strive to make an Olympic team. And then you also have the team itself that's creating their story and you have all these people kind of pitching in. I think that's so special. I,、um, I always say that championships are won by culture, right? Yeah. yeah. And Maggie, you're one that has won a lot of championships, right? People call you the goat of women's water polo. How does that make you feel? Um, uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking at this table、uh -huh. and our team, like, we have some pretty amazing, badass women.、Mm -hmm. um, but I think to, to your point of culture and to that idea of GOAT, I really don't think that in a team sport there is a GOAT. There is the team that makes it happen. And I think Maddie was saying that earlier. The tote. The tote. The best team of all time. Team of all time, baby. <laughs> tote. The tote. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I firmly believe that because, for example, like in order for us to even be at this table,、mm -hmm. we had to have women who pushed the boundaries before us and give us this opportunity. We had to have them build that culture of excellence so we knew the language to come into. So I think that that's something that's been really special about the USA Women's Water Polo Program.、Mm -hmm. Not just how we've been a part of it, but before that and how we've adapted and kept, kept and adapted that culture. To hopefully continue being a, a tote and then building that, that, that forward. There are so many struggles with、um, the exposure of the sport. It's such a niche sport, but it doesn't have to be because we know about the dominance of the mainstream sports within the Olympics, but y'all are, are freaking killing it. And the sport itself is very difficult. But for you all to win 69 straight, that's insane. Talk to me about something that you want to see grow online with coverage on TV. What do you want to see for your sport? I mean, obviously, it would be wonderful to have more of our games more accessible to so many more people. I feel like oftentimes we play and it's like maybe it's live stream, maybe it's not. And it's us playing, or like we'll be playing here in the US. And I feel like sometimes we even get larger crowds going overseas and playing in Europe than we do here at home,、mm. which, you know, like. We're playing in front of our home crowds, and it's obviously wonderful to look up in the stands to see your parents like, supporting you.、Go、but、off. it will be, I mean, <laughs> I love my mom, I love all my parents, you know, but、um, you, know, you want to see, you want to inspire the next generations, you want to see kids in the stands, you want to see, you know, like, let's sell out, let's see how many people we can fit on a pool deck and like, sell out to more people would be amazing.、Um, but in doing that, like, then we can reach and touch more people with our sport. What would you say the barrier of entry is for water polo? Ready, set, go. <laughs> yeah, I think learning to swim is a big one. And I also think, like, see it, be it.、Mm. Like, 
if you don't see yourself in the sport, it's really hard to want to be mm -hmm. in that sport. And I think it speaks to like sharing our stories, sharing who we are as individuals, because you can see water polo, you're like, wow, that sport looks super cool. Like it looks like super aggressive. It looks like you have to be really smart to play. But like, if you don't know the people in it, you don't connect to the sport. Like sport is so much more than what happens in the water. It's so much more than just passing the ball. It's like the community that you build. It's the connections that you build with your teammates and then even past your teammates. Like how do you define your team? I think that showcasing our stories better, like telling who we are as people and what sport has done for us, how we've contributed to sport, like why we want sport to play such a big part in our lives is a big part of growing our sport because like you see it, you maybe don't see yourself, but you hear a story and you see yourself in that story. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, wait, I can do that. Well, and it happens, it happens within each other, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's what's so special about, especially our sport, it is so tough. Like mm -hmm. I would love to have people know, like, oh my God, that's Rachel Fatal. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's a Maddie Musselman. I also want to be a doctor and she's an Olympian, mm -hmm. you know? And then you have Ashley who's been carrying so much weight on her shoulders mm -hmm. for however many years and has embraced that and mm -hmm. said, let me welcome this pressure and make a huge difference, mm -hmm. not only in, in water polo, but in sport and for women. And they're all my best friends. Mm -hmm. What stuck out to me in that is you said the weight that Ashley's carrying. Ashley, what weight are you carrying? Well, I don't see it as a weight anymore. Like I, when I first got into this team, I felt like people were telling me who I was before mm -hmm. I knew who I was. Mm -hmm. And I was the first black woman to represent the US on the Olympic stage in water polo. And I had to really understand the history of access to aquatic sports for black people in the United States to really like speak on it and really be it and really understand why it's important for me to be here. Like it took me a long time to understand why me being here was important. And like speaking of representation, it's bigger than just like what we do in the pool every day, like the grind, it's bigger than that. And it goes back to sharing stories, but we get to carry that forward and we get to pass that on. Yeah. And when we lose a little motivation, we can look to those kids, we can look to our teammates who are younger mm -hmm. and we can give what we have and they give what they have. Mm. And it balances itself out. And I think that's what really grows the sport as well. You know, you say it so casually to balance running a business, being with your family, doctor, coach. How, how do y'all, how do y'all do it? Balance isn't easy for anyone, but to be an elite athlete coming up on an Olympic game, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to learn how to do it. Like if you asked us and this was our first cycle, we would be like water polo all the time, 24 seven. And if you ask me now, like, I'm always doing something like chilling I'm, with her. Fiance. Oh yeah. yeah girl. Um, <laughs> but like now I'm like getting lunch with past teammates or I'm working on something for PA school or I'm going back to see the team I coached or, you know, connecting with family. Maybe it's making a weekend trip so that I can keep those relationships and not miss out on the, the big life things that people are doing around us because we have missed out on a lot. And, you know, Maggie's getting married in November. Yes, like, she there's is. big things happening and you know, we can, how can you still have success and be excellent and do the things that, you know, this team has done for so many years while also doing other big life things and not forgetting about those things. I love that you have younger teammates because there's a steep drop off for girls in sport after the age of 14. And it's a lot because of body image, right? They're, they're in their schools and you, when you work out, you get muscles and we're taught so often, which is kind of wild to me. You can't be too muscular. You can't be yeah. too this, mm -hmm. that, and the third. Why did y'all stick with sport going into your adulthood? And how did you tackle those body image issues? I stuck with yeah, sport because it was fun. Yeah. Like I had fun playing with my best friends <laughs> and- um, Pool party. Yeah, <laughs> pool party. Pool party every day. <laughs> and I can't say I didn't struggle with body image because we're literally in suits on full display, mm -hmm. like everyone can see you and you can see everyone. So there's the comparison, but just the way of water polo is that you need to be at your strongest and your most competitive at all times so that you can even play. No, yeah, um, what's my change? I don't know, I just, I like to work out. I like to move my body, but it did take me a long time to kind of like 
feel comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I was younger, people would be like, oh, you have such big shoulders, you must be a swimmer. And I would be like, like, don't look at me, you know? Like, yeah. I don't know, especially I feel like when you're younger, it's like uncomfortable to be like called out for like a physical body mm -hmm. part. What was the point of ownership? Like, what was the turning point where you were like, I'm gonna own the fact that I'm a swimmer. I'm Just gonna own like the fact that I do border being polo. Like, I'm proud of what we do. Like, we work our bodies every day to push it to, you know, what it can do yeah. because of our sport and also because we love our sport. And I love my team. So if me being, you know, looking like this is gonna help my team and myself improve and push and help us win, then I would love to look like this. Well, let's have this a point of celebration. I want y'all to pick a body part and tell me what you're most proud of, like how that symbolizes strength regarding um, the sport. So pick a body part, your favorite body part that helps you get through women's water polo. I guess, I don't know, it's a body part, but I'm gonna pick my brain because one, for a lot of reasons, I mean, I've been injured a lot, so I could pick one and say like, I'm happy I rehabbed it too, back to health. And I love it, but um, I'm gonna pick my brain for probably more mental health reasons than, um, and just like learning and growing and becoming, you know, confident in who I am and like kind of owning it and like realizing it and my brain changing with just things that we do every single day. But I've also like dealt with a lot of anxiety or just pressure and like being on, an, like striving for an Olympic team is very stressful in itself. And w our team does a lot of mindfulness. And I think I didn't really know what to do with it when I first joined the team at 15 years old. And so it's cool to see the change. And so I would say my brain has become something that I really, really value. And it's doesn't, I shouldn't take it lightly. I shouldn't just push it to the side. Um, and I should really, really appreciate it more than I have in the past. I choose my skin because I feel like it's just like protecting me. I felt like it was what made me different before and um, going off of what Maddie said before, uh, Maggie really encouraged me to use my difference and like lend that to my teammates, like bring it to the environment and I've realized how much leading with like the color of my skin literally has changed our sport in some ways but has changed how I feel in our team and like going back to the sun protection. <laughs> like, just learning to take care of myself, learning to take care of my skin, learning to celebrate my difference, and knowing, like, the effort that I put in to take care of my skin and what, knowing that it makes me beautiful and finding the beauty in it, no matter what I thought when I was younger, what people told me, like, how I felt, it's now what I lead with and what really, like, makes me powerful. Your skin is silk, okay? <laughs> silk. But do you see how, like, it's just like being around each other. It's like inspiring. I was sitting here, I was like, God. <laughs> I want to run through a wall now. Yeah, yeah I'm like, ready. And there are more memories to be made because 2024 Olympics are coming up and there's a win streak on the line. Do y'all feel the pressure to adhere to that excellence, that dynasty? I think our biggest pressure is getting to where we want to be as a team. Um, this quad is really, this four year cycle is unique because we haven't had as much time together. We've really gotten some space to explore ourselves as individuals. Like some people have businesses, Maddie's gonna be a PA, like Rachel's been coaching, I've been with my family. Like there's just been so many things going on that we've been treating ourselves more as professional athletes and finding that balance between our training and life and now it's time to lose that balance and really like get to know each other again, get to know ourselves again, figure out our weaknesses, figure out our strengths and like build the best team that we can so that we can accomplish our ultimate goal. When you look back, no matter how you spin it, you're gonna be in the history books as a dynasty. What do you want your legacy as a team or as individuals to be when you step away, whenever that may be, if this is your last Olympics or if you have one more to give or two more to give, however, you know, in your 50s, who knows? But um, what do you want your legacy to be when you step away? I, th I think one of the reasons that we're a little bit speechless when you ask that question is because it's ingrained in us to be as present as possible and and dream big at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about leaving your legacy, you're really thinking about doing that every single day. Like leaving your legacy to me is a habit. It's not something that just happens one day. Like, oh, you won something, you left your legacy. No, it's 
the habits that you show every single day, like I was talking about the leading by example and the hard work that Rachel has done. I think about the way Maddie has changed the game of water polo by the way she plays and her ability to perform under pressure. I think about Ashley every single day being a leader vocally and physically and also showing people that <laughs> amazing things can be done every single day, not just once a year. And I think I wanna prepare this team to carry the torch moving forward. It's really important for me to do what the leaders did for me when I first started my journey where I felt to that, that confidence I'm speaking of now as a veteran, I wanna give that confidence to the young girls so that if we're not here in the future, they're ready to carry that torch and make it brighter than what we've done. Um, Mic drop. Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our eye communication. Sorry, I'm <laughs> <laughs> all of y'all are like, <laughs> we're very good at nonverbal communication. A legacy of gold, a legacy of winning, just a dynasty, just being badasses in the water and doing who knows what under the water. <laughs> Rachel, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I love it and continue to inspire because those who might not know about how dominant you are, I have no doubt in my mind that after this, they will. Mm -hmm. So. Congratulations for all your success, Rachel, Maddie, Ashley, and Maggie, and I can't wait to see y'all in the water in 2024. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.